Hallo, guten Abend zusammen und herzlich willkommen. Ja, die erste Session am heutigen Abend im Track Digital Workplace. Ich freue mich, dass viele von Ihnen dabei sind ähm, und würde sagen, die nächsten 40 Minuten, ähm, die gehören dem Peter. Peter Gieklinger von der BSH Hausgeräte GmbH, auch bekannt als Bosch Siemens. Ähm, er wird uns heute was darüber erzählen, ähm, wie Sie Confluence und Lynchpin äh, nutzen, um ca. 60.000 Mitarbeiter und Mitarbeiterinnen im Großkonzern zu erreichen. Und äh, ja, wie das genau aussieht, ähm, erzählt uns Peter. Ich übergebe das Wort an ihn. Viel Spaß. Ja, vielen Dank. Um, I'm going to present today in English. That's how we, how we decided to do this presentation, to make it uh, visible to a broader audience. And I'd like to say thank you very much for being here today. And I'm going to present about our new intranet at BSH Hausgeräte, how we are reaching up to 60,000 employees using Confluence and Lynchpin. Many thanks for being here today. Some information about me. My name is Peter Gicklinger. I joined BSH 10 years ago, and I was working as an IT product manager and took over the IT project management for the internet relaunch some uh, years ago in 2019. And since June 2020, I'm now responsible for our Atlassian and collaboration services at BSH. Some words about what is BSH. BSH is the leading manufacturer of home appliances in Europe. We were founded in 1967 as Bosch and Siemens Hausgeräte, a joint venture between Bosch and Siemens. And uh, we are around 58,000 employees worldwide in 40 factories around the globe. But what's behind actually? You might have heard of the one or the other brand behind BSH. So it's Bosch, Siemens, Gaggenau and, and Neff, as well as some local brands and, and label brands. We have our ecosystem brand Home Connect that connects all these brands together and some service brands where we deliver digital addi uh, additional products that, that connect our, our services. So what did all these 58,000 people have in common? Well, in fact, it was a very nice, outdated, old-fashioned intranet. It was launched in 2008, and it was still uh, based on SharePoint, SharePoint 2007, 2010. And we had a classical top-down communication only. So there was a corporate communications department that did all the communication from top to down. We had no social features, no interaction was possible. It was accessible from internal only, and we had no, no options to use it from a mobile phone, for example. It was very static, very complicated to create content, and the permission management was really pain. So. Yeah, at some time, people started to leave the platform, and this was where we came up with the internet relaunch and finally made it to relaunch it. The challenge was actually to do this within almost one year because we, were, we ran out of support, and it took some while to, to get this project started. And um, yeah, that was basically the, the, the greatest challenge to launch this internet in, in one year. So we came from a very old school approach. And we wanted to get rid of this outdated department structure and abbreviations that you need to know to click wherever you um, might find the content. We wanted to get from the department-based content towards a topic-driven approach that is very important to, to say up front, maybe. And uh, we wanted to have personalized content, social interaction possible, get people involved. And um, another thing that was pretty um, important for us is that we have subscribable news channels so that people can decide what they want to have in their news stream and what is relevant to them because it's the start page for 58,000 employees and it is important to find yourself uh, some, some content that is readable. On the other side, uh, we needed state-of-the-art uh, technology to be 
able to deliver fast and uh, an easy way to access the third party systems because there was always this challenge in fighting. You might know that I want to be with my link, with my application on the first page of the, uh, of the internet, on the start page. And we wanted to get rid of this discussion, but make it somehow. And uh, this is why we decided on our motto, make it yours. But as you can see on the, on the picture, taste is objective. You need to cook on your own. Cooking is easier using the right tools. And uh, we decided on using Confluence on the one side as a well-established platform known in the company already because we use it for our corporate wiki, for our brand portals where we store all the style guides and um, our regulations are stored in there, our group policies, as well as all our software development. And uh, on top, we put Lynchpin as an out-of-the-box bundle for internet add-ons. So we didn't want to reinvent the wheel within one year. We just wanted to reuse what was suitable for us. Some custom development was needed. I'll talk about it later. I'll show, show it later. But we really tried to keep it at a minimum. On the infrastructure side, we decided on Docker and Kubernetes, a highly flexible and scalable containerized solution within the AWS. And we used New Relic monitoring and Kibana to base our decisions on the real usage. So we, we can see errors before they occur, before the user can see them. And that's what really makes it uh, important for us. As I said, cooking is easier using the right tools, but still you need a good recipe. And our recipe that, that, that fit best for us actually was to create a cross-functional team to get rid of department silos, IT on the one side, business on the other side, and to work in this contractor mode. So we wanted to get rid of this, decided on uh, using Scrum with our product owner outside the corporate communications department. So we have the, um, the product owner in, in corporate communications. He was heavily supported by Init uh, that did a lot of research and conceptual work on, on the site to continuously collect feedback and to conduct interviews up front. We had 27 interviews for um, all, all across the globe, 100 interviews virtually, and 16 international workshops at that time to collect what the people really need out there in the, in the different locations. And on the development side, we have a global development team spread across the globe very motivated people and we have Xalt on board that is, or that was and it still is happily and heavily supporting us on, um, on the DevOps experience on the DevOps side and uh, has a profound knowledge on the Atlassian tool stack and helped us a lot to, to integrate this in our, um, in our portfolio. So you might know this graphic. We used Dev DevOps, I already said before, and we did daily deployments on, on our test systems, automated testing, weekly deployments on our production system, and implemented the continuous feedback we got from our users. We started with small steps with the new system, then we created the content, then we created the features on top, and uh, we ensured a, a good acceptance along the way, which was quite important for us and which also helped us to have a good user feedback and motivated people to move their stuff back in again to this new intranet. So we really stripped down the requirements that we got and we built the best possible minimum viable product for us within one year. And time, as time goes by, we uh, we added some features that we required at a later stage. But now let's see what was the outcome. And uh, we announced this by um, producing a short video. And I would like to show this to you.
Yeah, so you can imagine the people were watching this video and that woke them up and they said, oh, we're going to be, we're going to have a, a new intranet. Here is how it will look. And uh, I brought a screenshot and this is how it, how it looked when we, when we initially launched it. And uh, on the right side, you can see this app center that I was referring to before. On the left side, we included the stream. So on the right side, we solved this problem of being on the start page in any case. And uh, we, we implemented the Lynchpin app center where people can drag and drop their apps and drag them to the position they needed and personalize it. On the left side, you can see the stream uh, where we summarize the global uh, likes and, and comments as we are having this internet in many, many languages. The news, it depends on the news how many languages are used, but between one and seven, eight, ten. And uh, like this, we, we accumulate the, the likes and comments to make it visible to everyone. And this stream consists of, of different parts, actually. Uh, we have no defined language. So that means if you publish a news, it will be shown in any case. And once people start translating it, then the translated news will be shown to you depending on the, the profile settings you have in your Lynchpin profile, in your, in your Confluence profile. With regards to the news channels, I said the left side is personalized. So we have some mandatory news channels like coming from the board of management, the business and strategy news that are absolutely mandatory for everyone. And on the other side, we have some passive personalization, we could say, that is coming out of your profile settings, out of the HR data that, that is, is gathered. And you automatically have a pre-filled stream that you can adjust and uh, you can subscribe to additional news channels that you can see other, uh, on, on the bottom here. When you click on this newspaper sign, then you can subscribe to this, this channel if you're interested in. Another thing that is probably important and that uh, I like pretty much is this Inform label. Inform is our employee magazine that we use at BSH. And um, every editor can actually label his news as Inform, which causes the news to pop up in the global stream for everybody. So whenever someone out there in one of the regions, locations, considers the news as very important that uh, will be shown to everybody. Like this, we overcame this top-down structure and it's really used heavily and a lot of cool things are coming up now that we would never have had before. So maybe stepping into the news, this is how it looks. And on the left, you can see the different languages here. On the right, you can see additional info like contact data and likes and comments. We adjusted the template a little bit, and um, by clicking on this uh, on these buttons on the on the language, you can switch the language in this case, for example, to Russian. Coming to the edit mode, we also did quite some adjustments based on the user feedback there. Apart from the metadata that you can see on the top bar in Lynchpin, where you can set the, the power teaser, the title, etc. We added um, so-called editor assistant, which supports the user to fill all mandatory fields that are important for his news to be shown correctly, to be shown in a professional way. And by clicking on the right uh, buttons, you can add, for example, image gallery or whatever um, to make your use complete, so to say. Um, when it comes to the image gallery, this is one of the most important add-ons that we developed on our own, thanks to Xalt on, this, uh, on doing this. So we have uh, images that can be uploaded via drag and drop. We can select them, which we want to have in, 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 the, in the gallery. And you can also sort them via drag and drop. You can add some caption and you can add some copyright text there if needed or some with regards to the, uh, to the GDPR. Also, who is visible in the, in the picture. And what you can also do is to, to crop them. So no editing needed anymore outside the platform. It's all included to the, to the image gallery, which was one of the most important findings. Actually, we got back from the editors when they 
are doing in a, um, a gallery, they just want to do it quickly without any additional skills on how to work with Photoshop or anything like that. So we implemented this all in, in the image gallery and I linked it down below. We even launched it in the, in the shop, in the store. So you can check it out and try it out for free. Feel, um, we, we would like to share this with you just to, uh, to experience that because I think this is something that is somehow missing uh, when, when you look at Confluence and the current setup. So this is how it looks when you go to the uh, view mode. So we have some masonry layout and slideshow layout that you can see here. You can select that in the background, back end. It's very easy to use for anybody without a huge training. Uh, I didn't talk about the content pages so far, but maybe a few words about that before I end my presentation. So we structured our intranet by services instead of department. I already said that before. We personalize the main navigation and just show what really matters to the user that is signed in. The My BSH button shows the services that are important for him or her, and they are relevant only that, that are relevant only for the user that is clicking on them. We include global, regional, and country-specific content in one page. Like, for example, we did it for the coronavirus page. So whenever the user clicks on it, he will get all the required information from top down to the, to the country, to the location. And we used scroll translations and include plus macro to realize that to keep all consolidated on one page while keeping it multi-language um, capable, actually. This was one of the most important things we had. Yeah, so this is a short overview about our internet. So what's next? We are still on a journey regarding the mobile app. We have um, live streaming integrated by the end of the year, which is a corona-driven topic that was very important to have the live stream directly in there from our platforms. We have a Chira integration and knowledge base integration there. We are thinking about external collaboration spaces. So we, we, we think of expanding the internet to a common platform. And of course, we are always on Kenny.io to, to vote for cool new features. And we have a lot of them already uh, in our product. So thanks again also to, to Lynchpin for, for supporting us in, in this uh, awesome way. Let's meet on, on Kenny. I will vote them up and um, looking forward to the, the cool new features to come. And I'm looking forward to your questions. Afterwards, let's meet. Thank you for your attention and have a good day. Thanks, Peter. Vielen Dank, Peter. Sehr cooler Vortrag. Um, Im Chat uh, kommen schon. Äh, Antworten rein, wie wir wollen euer Intranet nutzen, obwohl wir gar nicht bei euch arbeiten. Also dieses Video, das ähm, hat hier schon für Gesprächsstoff gesorgt. Ähm, genau, wenn es ansonsten äh, jetzt Fragen gibt ähm, an Peter zum Intranet, zum Vortrag, äh, stellt die gerne im, im Chat. Genau. Wir warten einen Moment, äh, was da so eintrudelt. Mhm. Ansonsten eine Frage wäre da schon, ähm, was dann die größten Herausforderungen ähm, des Projektes im Bereich Großkonzern waren und wie ihr die gelöst habt? Ja, die größten Herausforderungen, die waren zum einen mal das Projekt überhaupt auf die Beine äh, zu stellen, weil natürlich immer wieder andere Projekte wichtiger sind, wenn man an die Konzernwebseiten denkt oder so, das ist nach außen sichtbar. Da kommt oft das Internet zu kurz, das kennt man ja. Aber wir hatten eine sehr starke Abwanderung auch in andere Plattformen und äh, man wusste eigentlich nicht mehr genau, wo sind denn jetzt die Informationen, die für mich relevant sind. Und dadurch wurde es auch immer, immer ähm, offensichtlicher, dass wir in die Richtung eines neuen Intranets gehen wollen und müssen. Und die, die vielen Links in verschiedenste Systeme zu personalisieren, das war auch so ein, ein Thema, eine Herausforderung, die wir bewerkstelligen mussten. Und da sind wir bei Lynchpin gelandet. Und äh, es war am Anfang extrem herausfordernd, Business und IT, also die Kommunikationsabteilung mit ihrem kommunikatorischen äh, Ansatz und die IT mit ihrem stark technischen Ansatz, 
zu vereinen und da war was wirklich Nutzerfreundliches, was Cooles draus zu machen, dass man einfach in die Hand nehmen möchte, mit dem man nicht ein langes Training braucht, das nicht voller Berechtigungen ist und das einfach funktioniert. Und das war so die Herausforderung, die wir hatten. Vielleicht noch zusammen mit dem Single Sign-On in die Cloud. Das war noch eine richtig spannende Thematik. Die haben wir aber auch gemeistert. Okay. Um, one more question in English. Uh, what mm -hmm. other tools have you evaluated before deciding to go for Jira? What were the top two competitors? Good question, because this took us quite some while. <laughs> we were coming from uh, SharePoint Internet, as I said before, and we were heavily thinking about Office 365 integration and and and, and SharePoint again. So we had Valo and, uh, and, and, and others. But what turned out was that it was very complicated, especially for non-IT guys to get used to this very technical thinking of SharePoint at that time. It has quite changed, changed uh, a little bit now with Microsoft Office 365 and Teams. It's, it's get, getting a little bit more intuitive, but this was the, the greatest challenge, I guess. And uh, we just couldn't see the spark in the eyes uh, of, of, of those who were checking these solutions. So we decided at some point, and it was a, a hard decision uh, from the technical perspective, But uh, at some point, we decided oh, we need to go with, with Confluence. Uh, we, we need to look further because there it's, it's much easier, but it is not an intranet. What can we do with it? And then we, we came across Lynchpin, and then this, this decision was very easy to take at, at the end because it, it just delivered so many cool features that we could use and that we were instantly able to use. And this convinced basically everybody then. So this was the decision to, to go for, for Confluence at that time. And it was well known in the co uh, company already, so that made it easier as well. Okay. Noch eine Frage: uh, Messt ihr technisch den Erfolg eures Intranets Klickraten? So do you measure? Um, yes, <laughs> we do. Um, we have a view tracker installed, and I can really recommend that because it's um, integrated in a very nice way. So I was showing it before, I guess. You, you can see the total views of the news, you can see the total likes, and we are uh, in heavy discussions about the most rated content feature and the most liked content and people who clicked here um, like that. So this is the feature that is uh, going to come, I hope, in the, in the very near future. And I know ViewTracker is working on an integration on, on Lynchpin, like uh, Red News, Unread News. And uh, this is, I guess, part of the news version already. So we are about to, to check that. And this is what was very important for us to have this directly integrated into the platform, not on an external tracking tool or so. Besides that, of course, we have New Relic and, and, and monitoring features enabled. So we see uh, which pages are the, 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 the most ranked, the most liked, the most visited. And any ideas um, how to measure the non-technical success? of the internet? Um, by user feedback. So we have a, a, a user feedback page and uh, it, it uh, turned out that this is a frequently visited page where we get a lot of uh, positive feedback, even from those who were, let's say, waiting for the internet to come with more or less success. And we got some quite, quite good feedback on these pages. And we try to integrate it whenever there is uh, something missing. We try to integrate it in the next sprint. So we're still working on improving the platform. Okay, so one more question. Um, was für laufende Kosten hat das Intranet und was hat das Projekt ungefähr gekostet? What were the running, what are the running costs and how much did the project approximately cost? Die laufenden Kosten, da kann ich dazu jetzt gar keinen äh, letzten Stand geben, da müsste ich nochmal nachgucken. Aber wir sind definitiv weit unter dem, was wir davor ausgegeben haben. Da müsste man jetzt die Lizenzkosten und dergleichen dazu ähm, kalkulieren. Ähm, eine ganz gute Übersicht äh, gibt es da, glaube ich, auch auf eurer Seite bei Cybert Media, was, was im Endeffekt die Lizenzkosten äh, darstellt. Wir sind auf Data Center, auf Conference Data Center. Und äh, wir haben die Linchpin Suite mit Unlimited Users im Einsatz. Die Projektkosten lagen im 
sechsstelligen Bereich, im mittleren bis höheren sechsstelligen Bereich. Gibt es weitere Fragen? More questions? Also Im Chat ist jetzt aktuell nichts mehr offen an Fragen. Ansonsten, meine Kontaktdaten sind eingeblendet. Ich stehe jederzeit gern zur Verfügung. Können wir uns gerne nochmal austauschen. Vielen Dank für die Fragen. Vielen Dank fürs Zuhören. Vielen Dank fürs Dabeisein. Hat Spaß gemacht. Ja, vielen Dank auch bei mir. Und äh, genau, danke an dich, Peter, für den tollen Vortrag. Und an alle anderen ähm, sehen uns dann vielleicht beim nächsten Vortrag in dem Track. Bis dann. Dankeschön. Tschüss. Thank <laughs> you.